This is Maximilian Alvarez for The Real News Network, coming to you from Birmingham, Alabama, outside of the retail, wholesale, and department store union headquarters. Just 20 minutes down the road in Bessemer, Alabama, around 5,800 workers at the Amazon Fulfillment Center are currently involved in the process of voting on whether or not to join a union. At the RWDSU Mid-South headquarters in Birmingham, I got to sit down with one of the Amazon workers at the Bessemer Fulfillment Center and talk to him about the working conditions at Amazon and about the union drive itself. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me, man. I really, really appreciate you taking the time to do this. Um, why don't you introduce yourself? My name is Dale Richardson. I work for Amazon and I've been at Amazon for 10 months now. All right. So you've been here since uh, since the plan opened? Almost. Yes, sir. All right. And are you originally from Bessemer? No, sir. I'm from Tuscaloosa. All right. So what brought you down here? Well, Amazon. Yeah? Amazon. The job. Just looking for a job, and I got hired on Amazon in March. Okay. So what were you What were you doing before that? Um, I was working at Facia Automotive. Mm-hmm. Uh, we make seats for Mercedes. Mm-hmm. Uh, we lost our contract. So we lost our contract to another company called Lear and company closed down and we was laid off. Mm. I was laid off and after the end, I was looking for a job and Amazon came around. So I tried Amazon. Is that... Is that something that has happened with a number of your coworkers? Have a lot of folks kind of come from out of town once the fulfillment center opened? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So where did you when did you first hear about the fulfillment center opening? Uh, I was told about it. I was told about it from a friend of mine and you have to you have to watch watch the website because they were putting the application online. You had to catch it mm-hmm. when you can, mm-hmm. you know. And I called it and that's how I end up at Amazon. Now, how did the how did the experience at your last job, I guess how has that kind of framed the way that you've approached the union drive here and I guess what your expectations are about your your employer, your coworkers. I mean, that's got a that's got a. I mean, that stuff leaves a mark, right? You know, when that happens. Well, the company I came from, we was union, and I knew what the union. I know what the, I know what kind of difference the union can make if the union was to come in. It all. Uh, it's good. Is the union can bring. Uh. Job security, better wages, you know, uh, keeping you from not getting fired just cause. Mm-hmm. And making sure you are well-respected and treated fair. Mm-hmm. And I felt like after I got hired at Amazon, which I thought it was a good place to work at the time, uh, I thought I worked there so long. I realized it could be better. Mm-hmm. And I felt like the only only way we could fix that is union. Mm-hmm. So me and a couple me and a couple of employees, you know, we uh we met with the guys and it went from there. Mm-hmm. You know. So the union the union the the union come in, they can make a big difference mm-hmm. when it comes to, you know, because you got Amazon right now. They uh, they change the schedule when you ain't aware of it. They uh, you get TOT time for going to the bathroom. Anytime, anytime you're off your station and you're supposed to be working, you get TOT time. Time out task. Time off task. Okay. Time out task. And they're 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 watching you like the second, right? The nanosecond that you are off task. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And uh 
And I just feel like employees don't deserve to go through something like that, especially mm-hmm. when you got to go to the bathroom or you got to leave off your station to get some water mm-hmm. or, or get fired for not being six feet apart. You know, when you got multiple, multiple employees walking in out the facility, mm-hmm. you know, everybody, everybody deserve to get treated fairly. Mm-hmm. And you hate to go in a, in a facility in your workplace, not knowing if you're going to have a job or if you're going to get doctored for no reason or you're going to get fired for not being six feet apart. It's, it's not right. Yeah. You know, it's not fair. Mm-hmm. You know, don't nobody deserve to get fired just cause. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody out there do everything they can, do the best they can, and they work out there. Mm-hmm. You know. I've seen how big that place is. You guys are hustling across, like, multiple football fields stacked on top of each other. Right. Yeah. And you only get... You only get two breaks out of 10 hours mm. and and the breaks are spaced out. Mm-hmm. You know, you from the time you get in there, it takes so long for you to get a break, your first break. That's tiring. Mm-hmm. You know, we're not machines. Mm-hmm. You know, we're not robots. We're mm-hmm. humans. Mm-hmm. You know, and like I said, I just think it's, it's just unfair. And Employees not getting paid for what they deserve and what they do. Mm-hmm. To me, they deserve a whole lot more. Mm-hmm. You know, and they say fifteen dollars. They feel like fifteen dollars is a good pay rate to pay us for what we do. Mm-hmm. It's not. Let's let's talk about that for a sec because this I know that this is what Amazon's PR people are saying. Right? Is that that they pay $15 minimum wa- or wages. Uh, they offer more than the industry standard for benefits and the messaging from their uh, anti-union website, do it without dues.com all the way down to what they're telling you every day is like, we don't need a union to take care of our workers, but there's so much that's missing from that as you're saying. Right. And so could, I guess, could you talk a bit about kind of what, you know, Amazon thinks or says it's providing to workers, but all that's not being included in that from, you know, the, the kind of whether or not management is transparent. You got, you, you got over, over 17 to, to 1800 employees sign an authorization code. Mm -hmm. If they was treating us better, it wouldn't have got this far, mm-hmm. you know, and I always, I always say when I'm talking to an employee or trying to convince, trying to get a yes vote. If the union was so bad, why the company doing everything they can to keep it out of here? Mm-hmm. Why are you paying the anti-union people to come here and to convince you to vote no when they could give us that money? You know, it, it 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 don't make sense. You run around here and you got to scare employees to get what you want. But this is our lives. Mm-hmm. We want we want better wages. We want more money. We want job security. We want be able to, we employees need to be able to do the things they want to do sometime too, instead of just going home paying bills or just barely getting by. Or when you get home, you can't do nothing else but lay down. Mm-hmm. You know, it just, it, they could do better. Yeah. They could pay better. We working for the the most, the richest man in the country. And he can't pay employees what they deserve to be paid. Mm-hmm. That's, that's not right. I don't see how people can mistreat you at these facilities, at these companies, mistreat you, underpay you, and can sleep. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody, every, everybody deserves to be treated fair, with respect, get, get the opportunity 
to be promoted, uh, have job security. And then when it comes to sick days, we need sick days. Every employee like me and every other employee, you know, you want to you want to be able to call in. I want to take a sick day without getting doctored. Are, are using your PT time or PTO time for a sick day. You know, you want to be able to negotiate things like that because things like that you can't help. You know, if you turn around here and I leave off my station to go to the bathroom for any reason whatsoever, as long as I stay in there, I shouldn't, I, I shouldn't be getting doctored every minute I'm off that station because you got, you got females with female problems, females. You gonna dock a female for going to the bathroom, not knowing what they going to the bathroom for? Mm-hmm. It's not fair. No, and like you said, it's like when it when it comes down to it, right? This is an issue of respecting the humanity of working people. Yes, sir. That humanity means that sometimes we get sick. Right. Sometimes we eat something and our guts are messed up, and we got to go to the bathroom more. Right. And we shouldn't have to explain to a manager. Why that's the case, I'm a human being. That's all you need to know. Right. And and on top of that, because that's just that that's on the job, right? That's in the uh the warehouse. But you were even saying on top of that, there's more to human life than getting up, going to work, coming home, bone weary and tired, going to sleep, and using all the money you make just to pay bills. And keep treading water. Like there's there's more to there's more to life than that. Right, exactly. But they don't but but it's like I guess I wanted to ask about that, right? Because that that really is and it seems like from the folks that I've talked to, it it seems like it is a really big part of this union drive, right? Which is to try to remind the folks working with you at the fulfillment center that they do deserve better than this. Uh, even, and if they've never been in a union before, if they've never had a job where they've been treated particularly well, they might not believe that. You know, I think we 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 are all so regularly accustomed to being mistreated at work that it almost feels like, well, what right do I have to ask for more? Right. And then you 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 got employees scared, don't know what the union about, don't understand. How the union can help, and and knowing and knowing how Amazon mistreats you, and I, I they scared they might lose their job because they anti union uh, anti union tactics they be, you know, and they intimidated. They don't want to like I said they don't want to lose their job. They don't want them to take away their benefits, you know, scare tactics to employees when they don't understand what's going on. They going to, they, Amazon are able to persuade them, you know, but like me and the ones who really support the union, we do the best we can to try to talk to employees that don't understand, but it's hard to do that when you go on a break because you're trying to get to your break because you don't have number two breaks and then you 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 walking. So we try to get the break and get get our break and get back. So it's hard because everybody running and trying to get back, you know, and they, they make it rough for us to be able to do anything when it comes to Leaving off your station, you know you can't talk about the union anyway on hourly time. You have to do it on break, off the clock. So you got employees when they leave off their station and go to break, they trying to get they trying to get the break and go eat, get back in a timely manner. Cause don't nobody want to. Uh, management comes to them, you late for your break, or you get TOT time, you ain't made it back, you know. Cause everybody need a job, mm-hmm. you know. It just it's it's just not fair to treat employees the way they treat employees, and then you turn around here and try to convince them we don't need the union, but you knowing the union will help stop some of the things that y'all are doing 
to mistreat us. You know, it's just, it's just sad to me. Yeah. Yeah. It just, I just, I, 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 I really hate to see everybody in that in facility and they give it 110 every day. Mm-hmm. That's why there's, that's why he in a situation he in when it comes to being the richest man in the country. But you can't, you can't show your appreciation to none of your employees, not just in Bessemer, everywhere. Mm-hmm. And we got you, your employees got you where you at. So at least treat them fair and pay them a, and pay them a better wage. So that's, that's all I ask. We do, we do deserve that, mm-hmm. you know? You know, 10 years ago, I was working in warehouses in Southern California. And this was back when I was more of a spring chicken, right? You know, this is before I blew out my knee, right? Even then it was, it was hard, right? That was in my twenties and you know, it's hot. You're running around, you know, we were stacking pallets and lifting heavy boxes, loading trucks and all that stuff. That's that even that is child's play compared to what, like the sophistication of the operations in Amazon fulfillment centers. And you said that, you know, you got folks who are given 110% uh, every second uh, that they're working is being monitored. Their productivity is being monitored to the most precise uh, measure. Could you, could you talk, I guess, a little more for, for folks who are watching who have never seen the inside of these warehouses? They don't know kind of what a day in the life is like for folks on the job here. I guess, could you just kind of paint a picture of kind of what that job actually entails? Okay, like 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 my job, for example. I'm a picker. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to walk you through time I get in there. Uh, I start up at 7.15. Uh, when I clock in, I go, we got a stream on our, on our floor, letting you know what station you go to. You got one, two, three, four, four, uh, so four levels, in four the, levels, yeah. four levels. Mm-hmm. Um, if I'm on station 31, 51, I got to walk to the third floor. So from the time you get there, you walk in, mm-hmm. got to walk to your station, you log in, then you, you have to uh, wait till the robot come. So when the robot come, it's a, it's a stream up there telling you which which you pull from. So I pull from that particular pod, mm-hmm. and uh, I put it in the tote where 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 it light up at. I hit it, it go, and then it release it. Then that that pod go. Another robot behind it. Pull from that. Instead of doing this all day, you know, when you're doing that, ten hours, about two thirty to three o'clock, you show enough exhausted. Mm-hmm. Might be before the end, mm-hmm. but I'm just saying, me, I'm exhausted. I gave you all I can give you, but I still got to do my job because I don't want to get. I don't want to get nobody to come to me and tell me my tech time ain't where it's supposed to be. My tote transition time ain't where it's supposed to be. You know, show enough now since this is going on because I feel like eyes on me. Right. You know, so every employee, if I know I get tired and it's very exhausting, fast paced, everybody is feel the same. Mm-hmm. And every employee deserve more than just two breaks. Two breaks ain't enough for what we do out there, you know. And, and presumably you're on your feet the whole time. The whole like time. You ain't, you, ain't, you ain't sitting when you're when you're doing this picking. No, yeah, I'm not sitting. It's just and we deserve, like I said, we deserve more than two breaks. Mm-hmm. You know. Uh, I don't understand why they just give two breaks. And like I said, it depends on which floor you're on, what what time you go to break. On a fourth on a fourth floor, 
I know on a certain side, from the time you get there, you don't go to break till 1130. That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a long cap. That's a stretch. Yes. Yeah. Very. So you got to rush and go get something to eat. By the time you go down there and get your food or warming up, whatever you might do or whatever you bring, just about your break gone if you warm warming food up. Mm-hmm. You rushing that down, trying to eat. Then you go back. Then you, you're going to run that off. Then depends on, like I said, which floor you're on. It depends on what time you go to your second break. You know? And that's stressful. Mm-hmm. It's it's tiring. You you, you you be aching. You you be catching cramps. Mm-hmm. You know? It just, they could, it, it could be better set up to me. It could be better ran to me. Um, uh, Communication can be better, a whole lot better. Mm-hmm. It can. And we're not getting that. And like I said, I just tell the employees, you know, they're doing everything they can to keep it out here. It got to be benefiting us. Because mm-hmm. a company ain't going to fight you that hard if if the union not going to benefit us. So we need to, I, I just say we just need to stick together and do what we need to do to try to make it better. You know, and something's got to change. And this, the union, is our only way out. They make that change. So. What's the, I mean, I got to imagine under that, those breakneck conditions, there's got to be high turnover at the facility. Oh, yeah, we are. Uh, you got employees coming in, they hiring, they are. Uh, Employees quit uh, because, like I said, the job is stressful. They, how they treat you. Uh, it, we're going to continue on having turnovers. You know, like I said, if it, uh, I was thinking before all this came, I couldn't stay. I can't get them two years. I can't get them two years of, uh, of employment because my body wouldn't allow me to the way they're going the way they treat me, the way they do employees, the way they find just cause. I could I could make a career out of it. So we do need to it it it, it we need some changes bad. Mm. And if we don't get that, I still can't I, I just can't stay. Mm-hmm. I have to move on. Cause I want to be able to go on my job and I want employees to be be able to go on their job. And feel like the job is worth it. Uh, feel like they getting treated right. Feel like they can have job security. You know, a safety environment, workplace. You don't want no don't no employee should feel like they ain't getting none of that. Cause everybody deserves better. So I just want we just we just want changes. Mm-hmm. That's all we ask. Well, you mentioned something, right, about, you know, how Amazon is kind of showing its cards, right? It's like if the union, you know, if the union didn't pose a threat to Amazon, if the union wasn't going to benefit workers, Amazon wouldn't be dumping this much effort into trying to stop the union vote. And, you know, I think that one thing that people uh, who are maybe outside of Alabama have missed about kind of the the push for a union at the Bessemer facility, right? Is that wages and benefits are important, uh, as you mentioned, right? But there's also a lot more to it, right? Like, I know that one of the uh, points that Amazon keeps making, which, I mean, I've heard this point made at every company that's ever tried to bust a union before, they say the union is a third party. And uh, you're going to have to go through them to communicate with us. You can't just come to management and if you have a problem and talk to us directly. But from everything that I've seen and from what people have told me, it's like you can't even do that now. Like the decisions that management makes, they're not talking to the workers about it. They're just like making these decisions. And then you have real you really don't have any grievance filing process or any sort of input from the rank and file. What I got a problem with when you just said that third party. 
The union ain't no third party. The union is consists of us. What we what we what we ask for and what we negotiate, it ain't got nothing to do with the union telling us what we need. We tell them and write down the issues that we have. It's all about the employees. We make the we make we make the union. And I tell a couple of employees too. To, to have a family, to have a family reunion, you got to have a you can't have a family reunion with one person. It got to be the whole family to make a reunion. So it takes all of us to stand together to make this happen, not just one. All of us got this. All of us got to stand strong. The union, they the third party. We we. We are the ones that make the call. We are the one that lo- negotiate the contract. We are the one that make the decision what we want changed. Not the union. They love to throw up the third party. They ain't the third party. It's all about the people. And I imagine the the union busting consultants that Amazon has hired, are they calling them a third party? You might as well look at it if they call them the union third reporter, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. 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 Well, I don't want to keep you too long, man. And I really appreciate all the time that you've given me. And I guess I want to just maybe round things out by asking, you know, where things are with the vote right now. What's the feeling um, for you and amongst your coworkers and the community? Like, how are people feeling about the vote? And the, the vote count starts in at the end of March. Right. Well, right now, it's looking good to me. And I ain't going to say if. I'm going to say when we win, it'll be it's going to hit all around the country. And I'm a, and I really feel in my heart that we're going we're gonna to do this. And I'm going to have faith. And I believe we're going to we're going to win. From Birmingham, Alabama, I'm Maximilian Alvarez, the editor-in-chief of The Real News Network. Thank you for watching, and please stay tuned for more of our coverage on this historic unionization vote at the Amazon Fulfillment Center in Bessemer, Alabama.